Hi everyone, here is another tension problem, um, but this is a tension problem where you have two separate cables. Actually, we have three cables in this one. A stop sign is suspended over the intersection of a pair of roads. The stop sign has a weight of 100 newtons, one cable makes an angle of 47 degrees with the horizontal, and the second cable makes an angle of 32 degrees with the horizontal. What's the tension in each cable? So I've got all three of these cables are connected, they're sharing forces, but they're separate ropes, they're separate cables, and they each have separate tensions. So let's start with my 100 Newton weight of the stoplight. So the stoplight is exerting a force of gravity down of 100 Newtons. Now that 100 Newtons is exactly the same down as it is in tension 3. So tension 3 is going to be 100 Newtons. This is like a, a dead fish scenario. Force down equals tension up and it's just sitting there. That's all we've got. But tension 2 and tension 3 are a lot trickier. So I'm going to get a different color here, see if I can make some sense out of this. Tension 2 is up to the right, and that is like the hypotenuse of a triangle. So part of that rope is pulling to the right, and part of that rope is pulling up. So this is going to be a force up, and the this is going to be a force to the right. Tension 1, part of this tension is pulling to the left, and part of the tension is going to be straight up. This is a static equilibrium situation, and static equilibrium makes the situation the sum of the forces are going to equal zero. This is Newton's first law scenario. What I'm going to do is now I'm going to do what we've done all along, and that is we are going to sum the forces up and sum the forces side to side. Now, because of the mathematical rule of alternate interior angles, if this is 32, this is 32, and if this is 47, this is 47. Now, before I actually do the math, I am going to write an equation for each piece of rope. So this piece of rope right here is adjacent to the 47, so it's going to be the hypotenuse T2 times the cosine of 47 degrees. This rope right here is adjacent to side 32, so this is going to be T1 times the cosine of 32 degrees. The up vector right here is the opposite, so this is going to be T2 times the sine of 47, and on the other side we're going to have T2 times the sine of 32. So now each one of my vectors has an equation with it, now we can sum our forces. So we're going to sum the forces horizontal, and we are going to sum the forces vertically. Now horizontally, all of the left stuff has to equal all the right stuff, so T1 times the cosine of 32, T1 times the cosine of 32, equals T2 times the cosine of 47. So the left vector equals the right vector. Vertically, I've got two up vectors, and the sum of the pair have to equal 100. Let me stop before I do the math. Why can I not assume half of the weight of the 100 is supported by the right support point and half supported by the left? It's not sitting in exact middle. These two angles are not the same, so I have to do it a little bit different way. So my up forces are T2 times the sine of 32 plus T2 times the sine of 47 are going to equal 100 newtons. Now I have two equations, two unknowns, T1 and T2. Did I get a number wrong? I did. This should be T1, shouldn't it? Somebody's been screaming at me and I finally heard you. Thank you. T1 times the sine of 32 and T2 sine of 47. Okay, gotcha. All right, now I have two unknowns, two equations. Here's how I'm going to do this. 
I am going to solve one of these equations for t1 or t2 and then plug it into the other side. Which one do I solve this for? It doesn't really matter, so I'm going to solve for t1. So t1 is going to be t2 times the cosine of 47 divided by the cosine of 32. Now, if you ever are doing a problem like this and you don't want to carry these cosines around as variables, make sure that you, at least when you do the math, carry it out at least four decimal places. Um, five would be even preferable. So I've got 47 cosine divided by 32 cosine, and I end up with 0 0.8042. And that's times t2, times t2. So I'm going to, whenever there's a t1, wherever there is a t1, I am going to put this in the place of t1 right there. So let's draw that equation. So t1 is going to be t2 times 0 0.8042 times the sine of 32 times that sine of 32, plus t2 times the sine of 47 is going to equal 100 newtons. So let's simplify this. So the left-hand side, 32 sine times 0.8042, I end up with t2 times 042616, and then plus t2 times the sine of 47, 47 sine is 0 0.7314, and if I add those two together, 0.42616, I'm going to end up with t2 times 1.1575 equals 100 newtons. Now I'm going to have to do a division to solve for t2, it's going to be 100 newtons divided by all of that, 1.1575. So what do I get? I get 86.4 newtons when I did this, so that is t2. Now how do I solve for t1? Well now that I have t2, t1 is really, really easy. I am going to take this value for t2, and I'm going to plop it back into there. And so if I get 86.4 newtons times 0.8042, what do I get? 0.8042. Um, t1 equals, when I do that, 69.5 newtons. Not too bad, is it? All right, we'll see you next time.